This video was filmed on the Fujifilm X100 Mark VI. Hi and thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Furk aka Phil and unfortunately I got sick again. That seems to be normal as a parent of two small kids. And due to my cold I was not able to finalize the video I was originally was planning. Here you have a quick peek but I guess that video will come next. Regarding a quick comparison regarding the Nikon ZF, the Fujifilm X-T5 and the X-100 VI. But today I want to share my thoughts regarding two words which are currently connected with the X-100 VI since the demand of that camera is skyrocketing and that's the word overpriced and overhyped. By the way, if you're wondering how I'm filming with the X106, I have this small mirror, which people use to use with cameras with flip up screens. And fortunately, this is also working with the X106. And the reason why I'm currently recording on the X106 is, first of all, I'm curious regarding the video in a studio setup. And also I'm curious how the footage will look with a film simulation, in this case, real Ace. Also, how the autofocus will perform in such a scenario. In addition, I'm also curious when the battery will run out when filming in 4K at 25 frames per second. Let's see. I guess you watched a lot of videos about the X106 lately. Since it has been released, more and more videos pop up on YouTube to cover that camera. I'm also in that boat and it looks like the X106 continues the hype train of the X100V. And when you have watched these videos on YouTube, there are two main topics which creators and viewers discuss and that's basically summarized in the words overpriced and overhyped with the question mark. Let's begin with the price of the X100 Mark VI. You pay 1800 euros for this camera and since it's a point and shoot camera with a fixed lens, the lens is included. But you are not able to change the lens, therefore a point and shoot camera. In the US, the X106 runs around $1,600 before taxes. If you just look at the price of the camera, you can say that, that the price is quite high and that it is definitely, but you also get the latest tech included in this camera. For example, you get the 40 megapixel sensor, which allows you a lot of cropping, for example. I have made my own video why I love that sensor. You can check that video afterwards. Spoiler alert, it's mainly because I'm an introvert and I love cropping. And in the latest iteration of the X100, you also get IBIS in body stabilization, which is both good for stills and videos. Luckily, the X106 also kept the internal ND filter, which is quite useful in daylight shooting. Also, overall, thanks to the fixed lens, you have a relatively small and compact camera body, which is relatively also lightweight. If you just take these spec examples and try to find an alternative, you can come up with cameras like the Sony A6700, which is also an APC camera with the latest tech from Sony, which costs also around about the same body only. Or you can bump up to full frame where you can also buy a Canon R8 body only for roughly the same price. Or if you go a little bit further regarding price, can look at the latest A7C lineup from Sony. But as soon you also put in the aesthetics of the camera into play, all these alternatives are not real alternatives because the X100 lineup has a specific retro design, which is quite unique in my opinion, and only Fujifilm serves that point. Therefore, if you look at the Fujifilm lineup, you could say that the Fujifilm X-T5 is an alternative to the X100 Mark VI. But as I already teasered, that comparison I will do soon, next to the Nikon ZF. In my opinion, that specific aesthetic and retro look is the main reason why it's currently no alternative on the market to compete with the X100 lineup. Sure, you can say that the A7C lineup of Sony has a retro design, but Sony doesn't have any retro dials. You can argue that that is not effective, but that's part of the retro game. And again, in my opinion, the X100 lineup doesn't have a competitor as of recording this video. You have alternatives, but there's no direct competitor. Now coming with that conclusion that the X100 lineup is unique, the question is, is it priced correctly? Specifically the X106. And therefore I just have to say, and that's for me just logical, that's the game between 
demand and supply. If there is a high demand for your product, you as a company will have the interest to make as much money from that demand. And in this case, Fujifilm bumped up the price of the X100 because they also acknowledge the hype around this camera lineup. Luckily, they also add some features like the built-in IBIS. So somehow the price bump is also justified. But again, I think every one of us, if we were the company of Fujifilm, we would like to milk that cash cow as long as there's demand on the market. Therefore, I think that the price bump of the X106 is quite justified. Next to inflation and higher cost prices nowadays, also trying to make more money out of the demand. I think that's just normal business decisions, which most of us would do the same if we were in the position of Fujifilm nowadays. Also, you don't want to forget the last few years I think one or two years, Fujifilm was not able to capitalize from the X100V hype. They were not able to provide enough supply to meet the demand and they basically left money on the table because their supply chain was not able to fulfill that high demand. That aspect must also hurt as a company. At least it would hurt me if I was in that position. So in my eyes, I find the X106 is currently, although it's sixth iteration of the X100 lineup, it's still unique on the market. If you compare different camera brands like Sony, Canon, Nikon, Ricoh, and the price is somehow also justified in my opinion if you look at the specs and if you look at similar specs from other cameras and camera brands. So now let's talk about this hype currently going on about the X106. If I look up the word hype in the dictionary it says hype is a situation in which something is advertised and discussed in newspapers, on television etc. a lot in order to attract everyone's interest. And if I look up over hype, it says to advertise or discuss something in newspapers, on television, etc. too much so that it seems bigger or better than it really is. If I look at these definitions, it's quite clear to me that people are causing a hype situation. In case of the X106, I would say the camera is definitely hyped by people who are making content online, on social media, etc. about this camera, including me, and are also sharing their positive and negative experience about this camera. But in my opinion, the camera is not overhyped because all the videos I saw, at least that's how I interpret them, are calling out the aspects of that camera, why they use them and why they prefer them to use them. Because these people are just sharing the experience and the aspect why they enjoy the X106. Fujifilm as a camera just did a regular product release in my opinion. They did their normal marketing and didn't do any overhyped marketing so to say. For me an example of overhyping a product from a company was the Canon R5 for example, where Canon themselves overhyped the video features of 8K recording and it turned out that that feature just overheated the camera as crazy. Uh, also that marketing made people think that that camera would be great for video, which it was only in aspects. Interesting, I just got an overheating warning at around 35 minutes of recording. So let's see when the camera will shut down. But where was I? Yes, regarding the overhyping of from a camera brand. So yeah, Canon R5 would be an example of an overhyped feature from a camera brand. In my opinion, the hype of the X106 is only coming from people from the internet who are camera enthusiasts. And uh, why that's the case, I basically explained that in my unboxing video of the X106. You can check that also out afterwards if you haven't already. In my opinion, the hype around the X106 is like on the stock market, to be honest. The hype and the demand is created by people and impacts the prices directly. And on the stock market, you can see that consequence quite in real time. If some news floating around about a company, independent if it's good or bad, it has sometimes a direct impact on the stock market. Either it goes up or down, although, although the value of the company itself hasn't changed. It's just a psychological game effect, what people think about the value at that current time. 
And for me, the X106 or X100V is the same. Like any product on this world, the demand of the people dictates the price of the product. It's just a lucky shot for a Fujifilm that currently people nowadays value retro in a lot of aspects of society. You can look at different lifestyle aspects like fashion, music or interior design where retro or vintage looks are coming back and therefore getting more demand. Or if you want to stay in the photography aspects, just look how film photography got its comeback. So in my eyes, the hype of something, in this case the X106, is a trend where people have a specific demand and if the supply doesn't meet that demand, prices will rise or in case of the X106, get out of stock quite quickly. And as soon the demand drops, you will see that companies will try to get sales by dropping prices via promotion or discounts. So overall, just a simple economic balance game between supply and demand. I'm afraid my rant here doesn't make sense, but uh, at least I was able to test the X106 in its video functionality. I'm recording now hmm, about 50 minutes, I think, almost an hour and the battery didn't die. So uh, that's quite good and interesting. Only the overheating warning came up, but no shutdown yet. I assume if you record in 6K or in 4K HQ, it will drop down the battery life much, much faster and probably also overheat much faster. But yes, um, that's just my two cents regarding the overhyped and overpriced discussion. In conclusion, as I already said, in my opinion, the X106 is a great camera for it on its own. The specs are quite unique because of the housing, because of the retro design. And if you want something like this, there's no real alternative right now on the market. If you just want to have a, a good dedicated camera, you should look elsewhere. There's a lot of different cameras nowadays on the market and for different price points, especially for as a beginner camera, I wouldn't recommend the X106 for this price. There's a lot more affordable options for you to get similar image quality. But again, if you want this specific retro design and this design comes from past cameras. Right now the X100 Mark VI is unique in, on its own. And if you want that camera, you have to pay the price and right now also be patient. And regarding the hype, I think it should normalize after one or two years when everyone had the chance to get their own X100 camera, if it's the 6, the V or the F whatever and then this situation should also normalize again like everything on this world regarding supply and demand. I really had trouble today to formulate my thoughts in English for you so uh, I still hope you somehow make sense about this video and I hope I was able to transfer the message I had in my head. If you're still here on until this point after my rant uh, thank you very much for watching you are the one who deserves the like if you want to support my small little channel, you can leave a super thanks or buy me a coffee via the link below in the description. You can also support me via the affiliate links also below in the description. And if you want to see more videos of my channel, just click on one of these.